I know you're probably wondering why this video is so dark, but um, the lights just went out and I was in the middle of filming the next part of my video. The part one is um, already out, so I'm doing the part two. And you know what? I was like, oh my gosh, the lights bloody hell suck. But then I was like, maybe this will be a nice ambiance. <laughs> I don't know about that. So yes, um, I'm just going to do a quick recap on the Francis Asuri case and where I ended up. If you haven't watched that video, please um, go and watch it, the part one of the Francis Asuri case. This is the part two. If you don't watch the part one, you're not going to be able to kind of like follow up the story properly. You're going to get really, really, really lost because it's such a complex case. Um, all together so yes um i ended on the 29th of august in 2004 when francis's uh family and friends decided that they were going to open a case of a missing person and the first person they did interview was a man known as desmond mcondo who owned the salon that uh, francis frequented most of the time so the police did go and talk to Desmond Conto and Desmond did say that um, he did, uh, he was the last person to see Francis, but Francis left the salon with uh, William Nguna. He did, he positively ID'd William Nguna because he knew William Nguna. They lived in the same community. And he was like, yeah, she lived with William Nguna and he even paid her salon bill. And he said that he also overheard a conversation between the two of them where William asked Francis where she was going and Francis said that she had been going, she was going to the taxi rank and William said he will drop her off at the taxi rank. And that was the last time that um, Desmond Mkonto saw Francis Rasuche. And so, like I said, the police set him down and they were talking to him and they were trying to track down her phone and they were trying to check if her card was being used so that maybe if she was somewhere and she had been just like trying to get a break, they would uh, definitely get that quickly. Uh, so they did track down her phone and her phone was actually found in uh, Hammanskral Town Center and it had been in the position of a man who said that he had bought that phone and when the police showed him a picture of William Nguna he did confirm that that is the man that sold him the phone but William had a different story to tell and he said that Francis had actually borrowed the phone to him to him because his phone died and um, that man who said William sold him the phone he actually uh, stole the phone from William and um the police so did something that I think was very smart. They were like, okay, fine, you know, we're trying to find uh, our colleague and this woman, so we're going to have to check your phone. And they checked his phone, and they, it, it turned out that during that time when he had Francis's phone, he made 89 calls on his own phone. And the police were like, well, how was your phone dead? How did she give it to you if your phone was had battery and you were making 89 calls? Um, there's never been a statement about what he said after that, but, uh, the police also got CCTV and they also searched William Nguna's car. And while searching William Nguna's car, they found a bloody carpet in the boot. And when they find, when they found the bloody carpet in the boot, it was sort of like bloody, but it looked like the blood had been, um, somebody had tried to wash off most of the blood. So the police asked him, what was going on there and he was like yes that is francis's blood and that is the carpet that they would use to have sex in the car and one time they were having sex and francis was on her period and that's how he explained that and because there was a lot of um i guess he was trying to get because he was trying to get rid of the blood um the police could not uh sort of like test the blood to see if it was actually menstrual blood or if it was just like uh blood from foul play because the blood had obviously been uh, somebody had tried washing it off and they also got footage of cctv and it turned out that um 
The sum of about 1,200 had been withdrawn from Francis's card, but the CCTV footage did not show somebody that looked like Francis, but it showed more of somebody that looked like William Nkuna. And he did have another story to tell. He said that he knew Francis's pin, but it wasn't him withdrawing money with her card. Um, he absolutely denied that. But there's something that William said when he was first arrested. He said that he had actually killed Francis Rasuche with his um, traditional doctor, an Inyanga, by the man of Phineas Kutumela. And Phineas had, I guess, cooked up muti potions with some of her body parts and the rest of them they disposed at several locations around Pretoria. And if anyone was going to be able to find those parts, it was only him and William who knew where everything was. So at this point, the police went to go and get this uh, Phineas Kutumela man. But while the police were going to get Phineas Kutumela, uh, William, on the other hand, was pressing charges of conspiracy to murder against Francis and uh, Francis's co-worker. He was saying that Francis and this other person were trying to conspire to kill him and um, he wanted to press charges because he knew that they had also hired a hitman to kill him and all sorts of things. So the police finally got a whole, uh, had William, uh, Phineas Kutumela in custody and he was like, of course, I know William and he's consulted with me a few times, but I don't have a special relationship with him than I have with any of my other clients. And uh, Phineas actually said that he was not even with William on the weekend of the incident that happened to Francis Rasuche. But it was just like a lot of things that were happening because the police was just kind of like trying to force information out of him. And he actually said that... Um, Okay, fine. He gave the police something. He gave police a jar of of ashes and said that maybe those are Francis' ashes. The police tested those and found that they were some type of, I guess, animal ash, uh, animal ashes. And um, he also took them to like several different locations. One of the locations he took them to was an area known as Boss Plus, and an area known as Boss Plus is going to show up in one of the other cases that William is involved with. So you might want to keep that in mind. So um, he took them to even a river and said that her remains were somewhere deep in the river, but uh, nothing was ever recovered of Francis. And he later ended up suing the department, saying that he was tortured, he was abused, and he was electrocuted in the in, in in police custody and he thought that they were actually going to kill him that's why he was making up all sorts of stories because he was afraid of his life and he won a lawsuit of five hundred thousand. and after that um the prosecutor on the case ended up dropping charges against him because they said that there wasn't any evidence that uh linked him to the crime and after that, uh, because of all that drama that was happening around the case, the judge was like, you know, we don't even have a body. We don't have enough evidence on William that we can use. So the judge decided to drop the charges uh, and William was released. But when William was released, the police were like, we're not going to let him get away with this. If anything, we're going to try and tie him up to the fraud case because he had been using Francis's card he had been taking out money and um you don't use somebody's card without their consent you don't use anyone's things without them telling you that hey you know so basically he did not have consent to be using her card so it was a fraud so at that time um the police were investigating this fraud charge against him and they were at his house they were looking for receipts they were looking for anything that could basically tie him to the fraud case and they were also looking for this t-shirt, this distinctive t-shirt that he was wearing while he was withdrawing all this money. And one of the police officers actually said that he was sitting there and just watching them look for the shirt that, you know, and 
I guess he could see that they're not gonna find it if he doesn't say anything. So one of <laughs> one of the police officer actually said that um, he said that the shirt is uh, he was like check in the laundry thing and he checked the laundry thing and he found the t-shirt that was distinctive and um, they bagged it up as evidence and he was actually charged with he was charged and convicted of fraud but the police also knew that if he went to prison for a fraud case he was not going to stay there long so they were like you know what we're not going to let this fraud case interfere with the bigger case that we are working on so after the fraud case he was released and he was back on the streets but the police were building up this huge 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 uh case against him and one of the things that the police said was like was that he could have only known that um it was okay to actually take out her money use it because he knew that she was not coming back and because he knew that she was not coming back he must have had a hand in whatever happened to her for her not to be coming back and that was the that that was the state's case at that point they were just going to try and prove that he knew that francis was not coming back that's why he was so comfortable selling her phone that, that that's why he was so comfortable just like using her money out of like taking out money out of her bank and just using it for whatever he used it for and that was the part of the case that uh would uh, land him back in court and in 2005 in april he was charged with the disappearance and murder of francis rasuche and his case was supposed to start in august of that year but um in august and on the first of august when the case was supposed to start he did not show up for the trial he actually handed himself over to the cops the police um seven days later a week later that's when he handed himself to the police and the case started after that and francis family all the members of the rasuche family testified in court and because they wanted him to also also to be locked up because he had done something so bad and he was keeping information about where he buried or where he threw her body and so after that the trial lasted 10 days and after 10 days william nkuna was convicted of murder and the disappearance of francis Rasuche, and he was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 2030 and a few weeks after him being convicted actually a friend of his a man that identified himself as david cornelius went to the police station and said i think i know where he might have buried francis Rasuche." so the police went with david uh, to this location and they found that here there was uh, an unmarked grave there and they dug it up and they did find remains of a human being but it turned out that those remains were of a much older woman who had been uh buried longer than francis had been missing um, and i for me like that's another thing that i'm just like wow that is so freaky like this man who has been convicted of a life sentence for the murder of his missing girlfriend his friend just sent the police to a grave that um he's involved in so that kind of freaked me out at that point uh but it did turn out that those were not the remains of francis Hasuche, and the case was called again and for a long time and like i said before it's like in the first video when i started every single time this case was there were, there were new developments with like the police would tell the media and the media would tell um i guess the the people of the country that this is what's happening in the case right now and all kinds of new developments and um in 2007 actually the like a bunch of like prophets and like traditional healers and mediums they were actually saying that they think they might have there were like a lot of tip tips at this point in time of this case one time the, the the tip that the police got was that the body is possibly buried in the garage and i i remember this story because it made national news and we were 
watching this man's garage being dug up by the by the police but um the police also didn't find anything in the garage and the case went cold again until in 2012 when the house was sold by the woman who was married to William Nkuna and she sold the house and they moved out and the new owner was coming in and was seeing these I guess these like slabs of cement everywhere and he was just like I don't know why these random slabs of cement everywhere so he got in a construction crew to actually sort that out and that's when the construction crew um while they were breaking apart uh, these cement slabs on the floor they discovered a human skull some bones and duct tape and a week later the police did confirm that those were the remains of francis rasuche and something happened in this case that i think you know is just a constant reminder of why our justice system is so like needs a lot of fixing Francis's family was not informed by any by anyone about any of that. They actually found out when a reporter was calling them for a comment and they were like, what do you mean? And but the police did say that they thought that the Hamaskar police was communicating with the family and they didn't know that the, the, the family had not been notified. And after that, Francis Rasuche was buried in the same year and she got the service woman. Um, burial that she deserved and at that point the police were like you know what we're going to just dig up that whole yard because William Nguna had been linked to the disappearance of a man who disappeared in 2001 so in 2001 a man by the name of uh, Ruben Gabini yes Ruben Gabini left his home in Limpopo saying that he was going to be seeing a man known as William Nkuna in Pretoria and uh, Ruben's car was actually found at that same place where Phineas took the police um, to uh, when they were looking for Francis' body then a place a place named uh, known as Boss Plus that's where uh, Ruben's car was found and he was never to be seen again and another thing that's just like really really crazy about this case is that Ruben's phone was actually found in the possession of one of Francis's sisters and one of Francis's sisters said that William had actually given him the phone as a gift and I was just like that's another thing that kind of ties him to the whole thing but um Ruben's body has never been found and the police were specifically looking for his um his remains because they knew that they were if they found a gold tooth then that would have been him because he had a distinctive gold tooth that um the police were just like trying to find and after that William was also linked to another disappearance of a woman who he had been in a relationship with this woman's name was Helen and Helen's body has never been found Helen's Helen has never been identified and um so when I hear all these stories about all these people, I'm in my head, I'm just like, William Nkuna could literally be a serial killer who is really good at making people disappear. But he's not that good because um, fortunately, Francis's Constable Francis Rasuche's body was discovered. And at this point, the community was just like up in arms trying to talking because for a long time uh William had tormented the community and people were sort of like forced into silence and not saying anything and when everything else was being found that's when they they were like you know what we're going to open up and they actually told the police that William was a well-known hitman who worked with taxi bosses because you know there are a lot of taxi wars in I guess the townships of South Africa and taxi wars there's usually like somebody who's known as a hitman who is hired by taxi bosses to kill another taxi boss or it's sort of like turf wars and he was known he was a well-known um hitman for taxi bosses i don't know if that's true but that's what the community um was saying and also another family that wanted closure was the family of desmond um, condor because Desmond Mkonto, after uh, positively identifying William as the man he had seen pick up Francis from his salon, he died of 
mysterious circumstances. One of his sisters said that he was okay, he was good, and then he was sick and he was in ICU and he died. So his family wanted a case to be opened so that they could, um, I guess, get justice for him because they thought that William Guna was definitely involved in whatever happened to Desmond Mukondo. And in 2015, William made like the most psychotic comment ever. But this is not like something that's not known. Like a lot of serial killers actually play around this whole thing where after killing someone, they basically torment the family. He put out a statement saying that the body that had been buried and the body the remains that had been found at his house were not the remains of Francis Rasuche. They were actually the remains of somebody else because apparently neighbors said that they saw what looked like a gold tooth. So I guess he was trying to say that those remains were the remains of uh, Ruben Gabini. But those were not the remains of Ruben Gabini. Those were the remains of Francis Rasuche. But he said that he was actually going to be writing a tell-all book. He was looking for a writer to write the book for him and uh, do this whole tell-all where he'd be telling the whole world or the whole country where he buried uh, Francis Rasuche's body. But as far as I've checked, uh, nothing is online. The book is not published. I'm not sure if anyone picked it up. Uh, but yeah, so that's it guys. Thank you very much for checking this case out and I'm not sure if he's still going to be eligible for parole, but, um, he definitely shouldn't be eligible for parole. Uh, and that's about it. This is the second part of, this is the ending of the Francis Rasuche case and Francis was found eight years later she went missing in 2004 and her remains were found in 2012 and her whole her family had to live with the fact that they were they didn't know what happened to her for such a long time and for him to just be in jail making like all kinds of statements and just tormenting the family is just like so sick to me but i'm not sure like i said if he's going to still be eligible for parole or anything like that but um uh that's it with the case thank you very much for checking it out like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted every single time and i promise i'm going to be active on social media because i suck at being active on social media so i'm just gonna try and be active on social media on instagram and on twitter so that i could grow my channel thank you very much i'm out